We're here at the Cooler Master headquarters at Computex 2025. We are looking at some incredibly cool stuff here, starting off with the Cosmos 2025. This right here, you've, you've seen the Cosmos before, very good looking case, but this one is very special. First of all, water cooling. Second of all, it has a bunch of foam on the front. This is aluminum and it's sort of like you do casting really bad and it looks awesome. But most exciting, is around the back they have a 360 by 360 radiator meaning that this thing is going to cool so much now depending on if you want this to be an air cooled or water cooled system the entire motherboard tray is able to move forwards and backwards to either give you more room for fans or more rooms for that absolutely massive radiator. We also have custom made water blocks. This one right here is for the 5090 Strix and also this really cool distribution panel. Now, at the moment we do not have pricing because things might get a little bit changed. So one thing that you could change Cooler Master is the pump. This right here, as far as I can tell, is a single DDC and in my experience, those love to stop working. So maybe a single D5 or two DDCs would be really appreciated in this guy, just so it's a bit more reliable. And speaking of reliability, reliably making this cooler was an incredible challenge for them because it's not a normal CPU cooler, but instead it has their new 3D heat pipe arrangement. This is the Cooler Master V4, and it is an incredibly interesting cooler. Now, how they have done this is instead of having your typical heat pipe where it just goes down, around, and up, they have drilled a hole into that heat pipe and soldered on another heat pipe. And this has a very interesting advantage. Looking at a heat sink that only has heat pipes on either side, you can see that a lot of the cooling is only happening at the sides. And then we have a cold spot right here and right here. You can also see where the fan hub is. It gets a little bit warmer because there's not as much airflow there, but you can also very clearly tell that where there's no heat pipes, there's not a whole lot of heat. But moving over to our new 3D heat pipe model, you can see that there are heat pipes going straight up the center. And that means that there's, well, cooling happening across the whole thing. There's a much more even temperature across the entire heat sink, and you can still see that there's a little bit of a hot spot where the fan hub is, but unfortunately, Cooler Master hasn't figured out how to make magic fans that don't require hubs, so they haven't figured that one out yet. But it is getting so much more heat in this middle here and cooling a lot more efficiently. Now, they don't have exact numbers for how much this will be able to cool, but it'll do more than 250 watts for sure. They're still tweaking things, so they might be able to get more than that. An interesting way to show that this is actually working is that the heatsink counterintuitively is hotter on the 3D heat pipe version. So these benches are set up, so each CPU is running at 75 watts and the fan is running at 700 RPM. And if we look here, the heat pipe on the 3D cooler is hitting, uh, 35.6, 35.8. The fins are all right around 35.2 to four. Whereas we move over to the standard heatsink, we can see that in some places we're around 34 and a bit degrees on the fins. Even I saw 33 for a second there. The heat pipes themselves are around 36. But by seeing that the cooler itself is hotter, that means your CPU is cooler because your cooler is getting more heat out of it. But as I mentioned at the start of this, creating this thing right here is incredibly difficult and the reliability of the manufacturing process is not the best. At the moment, they say that there's about a 50% success rate of manufacturing this and getting the solder to take. Now, you don't have to worry about getting a cooler with a broken heat pipe on it. They test all of them individually, but it is pretty expensive to throw out half of your batch in the bin and start over with the soldering. That said though, this is not some crazy expensive high-end cooler. They are targeting this much more at the mainstream and at the moment, this dual fan version right here is maybe $50. It might be a bit less, it might be a bit more, but with tariffs and it's still getting iterated on, I cannot say for sure. Right now they're targeting a late Q3, early Q4 launch, but they want to make sure that it's really solid and really performant before they do that. So 
Hopefully we see it soon. What's available right now though is this segue to our sponsor, Saley. Thanks to Saley for sponsoring our 2025 Computex coverage. Traveling abroad can be scary, but with proper preparation, you can rest a bit easier. And that includes knowing you'll have access to all the necessary apps and resources you need. With Saley's eSIM plans, you're covered in over 200 destinations, which means you'll get connected as soon as you land. Simply set up the app before you fly out and leave your worries behind. And if you run into any issues along the way, their 24 seven chat support is there to lend a hand. So head over to Saley.com short circuit or download the app and use code short circuit for 15% off their eSIM plans. Moving on to some more cases though, this is their master frame series and over the last 10 years, they've been putting in a whole bunch of effort to make their cases way more modular and way more configurable. And this is kind of the end game of it. What they have done is they have extruded aluminum that's able to get screwed into these guys right here so that you can completely change around the configuration of your case. This means that you can have it horizontal or vertical or either. You can just change it around if you so please. Looking at the back of this case, Cooler Master has also completely done away with rivets. So now there's screws all over the place here and each one of these blocks is totally modular. So for whatever reason you want a 90s style case, you can take your whole PSU shroud, pop her out, stick it up at the top and now you have a power supply that's up at the top of your case. Another advantage of this is that with your normal computer case, you might set it up like this and you can only have it on the right side of your desk, but maybe you want it on the left side of your desk. In the past, that means buy a whole new computer case. With this though, because all of it's modular, you can take it all apart, swap it all around, and next thing you know, you can have your computer case on the left-hand side of your desk and it's just that not very simple, but you can do it. That was largely practical stuff, but you can also do fancy things as well. On the front, they have a removable front panel with some, oh my God, really strong magnets. But you can take off the mesh, see these beautiful 200 millimeter fans, and if you so choose, you can make them entirely ineffective by putting something like slate in front of it. This right here seals completely against the front and completely eliminates those fans from being effective. Fortunately though, you could just move them to the side over here and you will still have cooling for your case and very cool slate. The Masterframe 600 will come in at $200 with this mesh panel and more like $250 if you want one of the fancy wood or rock panels on the front. Now, because of the modular nature of the Masterframe series, they're able to do stuff like have that aluminum extrusion just end and turn around instead of going down, like in this Master Frame 360 panorama. You're able to see so many of your components and it looks absolutely sweet, but maybe your pride and joy isn't your computer. So they have the Master Frame stage. This guy right here allows you to display a figurine or something with a whole screen behind it. So instead of looking at your computer, you can look at your accomplishments. Maybe you put a trophy here or something. One idea that Glenn had is you could have a waterfall on the screen and add in a bunch of little trees and stuff here for a nice little diorama, I guess. Either way, I love it. <laughs> Another really neat idea is the Cooling X Pro, where they don't just have displays for your CPU and GPU temperatures, but they actually have it with these analog dials that move around to tell you exactly how hot your system is running or cool, I guess. They also have the Elite 690 wood, which has wood on the front. Unfortunately, that will not be available in North America, so let's move on. What we will be getting, though, is the Master Fan XT. This guy right here has all metal around the outside, all metal on the inside, and with that aluminum, they're able to really crank up the speeds and the danger. This thing right here spins at 4,000 RPM, and I imagine people getting their fingies stuck in it will be a very bad time. I cannot wait to carrot test it in the office. They did say that there is going to be a mesh that you can put over front of it They will include with their consumer versions, but that will reduce your performance, so no one's gonna use it. I cannot wait for this to be a problem. One spot they encourage you to stick your fingers though is on the new Master Hub. This guy right here is a totally reconfigurable little dock thingy for streamers or gamers or anyone that just appreciates a dial for their home automation. You can totally reconfigure this with LCD screens and the like, and it's pretty neat. It should be on sale today or yesterday. What also is modular is the new Master Liquid Atmos 2 AIO. This guy right here has metal for all of the fans combined, which looks 
really sweet, I think. And also you can pop off this guy right here and install whatever front you want on your AIO. Maybe you want to just say Cooler Master, or maybe you want this cool little display. Neat. Also neat is they're getting into GPUs, sort of. This is intended to go on a 5090 Astro from Asus, and it's also intended to be sold only by SIs for the most part. But the innovation that they have is that it's very easy to service. So one of the main things that will die on a GPU is the fan. So they have changed it so that the user can go in there and swap out the fan if needed, and they don't void the warranty. You don't have to take off the cooler and the heatsink and everything from your GPU and do all that nasty stuff. Nope, just a couple of bolts along the side. You can take it off and as you see, the fans are very easy to replace. And finally, they have a racing simulator. This isn't anything new, I just really wanted to use it. So huge thanks for watching guys, hit like, get subscribed, and I hope you have a great old day. I certainly am at the moment. See ya.